Hello there, uh, Mike Bennett here with our second in a series of videos on membership in the Church of the Brethren, what it means to be, become a member, what it means to be baptized, and what some of the things you think about in preparing for that. You may remember the first video was about believing, believing in Jesus, accepting Jesus. The second one is about turning, turning from sin and turning to follow Jesus. The third one will be about joining, about about becoming a part of the church and promising to be faithful in that. You can see I'm, uh, I'm out in the woods. This is one of my favorite places to be. I'm not too far from our house and it's a beautiful, beautiful June evening outdoors. You know, in the early, early church, a lot of the ministry happened outdoors. And Philip is, the story of Philip is, is the one I want to touch on tonight. You know, last week, I, or in the first video, I should say, I shared the story of Jesus' baptism. It happened outdoors at the Jordan River. In those days, of course, things were quite different than they are now. This story tells is another baptism story from, from outside. It's the story of, uh, of Philip. Philip, um, in the New Testament, he was a deacon, and he was called to help serve, serve the widows, to make sure the widows in the church all got their fair share of, of distribution. You know, they helped to take care of each other. It's a little like we do on Tuesday nights with the community meal. Well, at their meal, not everybody was getting the same amount, and some, some were getting, being favored. And so Philip and six other deacons were called to make sure everything was, was fair and even. Then Philip went off to Samaria, and he started telling people about Jesus. And they believed. They believed him, and they, they were baptized. And after that, G Philip was whisked away, and he's on the road between Jerusalem and Africa. And there's this Ethiopian, an African guy, who's apparently, he's not Jewish ethnically, you know, by his birth, but apparently he was Jewish by his faith, and he had been to Jerusalem to worship, and now he's riding his chariot back home to Ethiopia, and he's reading this passage from Isaiah, and he doesn't understand it. It says, Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shears, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his way is taken away from the earth. For his life is taken away from the earth. And, and the Ethiopians reading that, who is that? He had no idea who the Old Testament writer was, was foretelling. And Philip said, hey, can I get up on your chariot? I'll explain what that means. And so he welcomes him up and Philip rides along for a little while and he explains that Jesus is the final sacrifice. He's the lamb that's slain for the sins of the world. And, and that's the way the Old Testament worship from Exodus on, it involves sacrifice. And, and that's the way people's sins were forgiven. And that does, that's hard to understand. It's, it doesn't really make sense to our thinking today. But Jesus became that sacrifice. And Philip explains it to the African man. And then the African man says, well, what's to prevent me from being baptized? And so right there along the road, there happens to be a body of water. And Philip says, hey, right there. They, they hop off the chariot. They go down into the water. And he baptizes this man. And he, he becomes a Christian. Not only is he believing in Jesus, but he's also committing himself become a follower of Jesus. In this story of Acts, right, right after this, that's described as they were the, the early Christians are called followers of the way. Followers of the way of Jesus. So, our second vow is will you turn away from all sin? And will you endeavor or, or work to follow I'm sorry, will you work by God's grace to live according to the example and the teachings of Jesus? In other words, will you turn from sin, turn from things that you know in your heart aren't pleasing to God, and will you instead fill your life with things that you know are pleasing to God? And I can, I know you've, I know you understand from Sunday school or children's story or from things, you know, First of all, that means worship, uh, coming to church, understanding and reading the scripture.
but it's much, much more than that. Jesus loved people. Jesus treated people fairly. Jesus would always put others and their needs before his own. And, and so Jesus had this wisdom and this love. Another part of that is loving God. The greatest commandment Jesus teaches is love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. All of those things, and, and we in the, New, in, the, in the Church of the Brethren, we believe that whole New Testament is, is kind of all encapsulated. That all together means the teachings of Jesus. So, the question for this second video and this week is, are you ready to turn from sin, things that aren't pleasing to God? Are you ready to turn to and promise to do things that you know are pleasing to God. Are you ready to commit yourself to following Jesus? I hope you'll get a chance to talk about what that means with someone special in your life. Your, your parents, your, someone who's special. Me, you're welcome. You're welcome to call me up or text me or reach out to me and I'd be glad to talk to you. I, I'm sure I will before the baptism service, but this is for what I want you to think about for this week. Are you ready to follow Jesus? Believing, turning, Next time, joining. God bless you all.